Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this service of evening prayer brought to you by Christ Church Borough Pair in Beaconsfield, but as usual for the Wednesday evening service coming from my home in Verdun. Today we're using the 1962 uh, Canadian Book of Common Prayer, this, so this is traditional language version for order for evening prayer. <clears throat> Our service begins on page 17. Or if you're using the PDF version, it's uh, 73 in the PDF, but 17 in the book. <clears throat> Thus saith the High and Lofty One that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is Holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. The hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. We continue with the confession on page 18. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us, moveth us, moveth us, in, moveth, <laughs> moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with a humble lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But... But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power 
and a commandment to his ministers to declare in part pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeigning to believe his holy gospel. Wherefore we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we, ought, we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come into his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips. And your mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Our psalm today is Psalm 72. Uh, give me a moment, I did not mark it. Um, on page 418. Psalm 72, page 418. We will read it uh, responsibly by half verse. Give the king thy judgments, O God. And thy righteousness unto the Lord's son. Then shall he judge thy people according, according unto right. And they pour with justice. The mountains also shall bring peace. And the little hills righteousness unto the people. He shall keep the simple folk by their right. Save the children of the poor, and punish the wrongdoer. He shall live as long as the sun. And while, and while the moon endureth from one generation to another. He shall come down like the rain upon the mown grass. Even as the showers that water the earth. In his time shall righteousness flourish. Yeah, the, and the abundance of peace so long as the moon endures. Let his dominion also be from sea to sea, and from the river unto the world's end. Let them that dwell in the wilderness kneel before him, and let his enemies lick the dust. Let the kings of Tarshish and of the isles give presents, and the kings of Arabia and Seba bring gifts. Let all kings fall down before him, and all nations do him service, for he shall deliver the poor when he crieth, the needy also, and him that hath no helper. He shall have pity on the weak and the needy, and shall preserve the souls of the poor. He shall de deliver their souls from falsehood and wrong, and dear shall their blood be in his sight. So let him live, and unto him let there be given of the gold of Arabia. Let prayer be, ma be made for him continually, and all day long let him be praised. Let there be an abundance of grain in the land, even upon the top of the mountain. Let its fruit wave like Lebanon. And let men flourish out of the city like grass upon the earth. Let his name endure forever. Let his name continue as long as the sun. Let all the tribes of the earth be blessed through him. And let all nations call him happy. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. Who only doeth wondrous things. And blessed be the name of his majesty forever. And let all the earth be filled with his majesty. Amen and Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our first reading, our Old Testament reading, is from the book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verses 1 through 18. Leviticus 19 and 1 through, verse 19. Chapter 19, 1 through 18. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to all the congregation of the people of Israel, and say to them, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. You shall, shall each revere your mother and father, and you shall keep my Sabbath. 
I am the Lord your God. Do not turn to idols or make cast images for yourself. I am the Lord your God. When you offer a sacrifice of well-being to the Lord, offer it in such a way that is acceptable in your behalf. It shall be eaten on the same day you offer it, or on the next day, and anything left over until the third day shall be consumed in fire. If it is eaten at all on the third day, it is an abomination. It will not be acceptable. All who eat it shall be subject to punishment, because they have profaned what is holy to the Lord, and any such person shall be cut off from the people. When you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not reap to the very edges of your field, or gather the gleanings of your harvest. You shall not strip your vineyard bare, or gather the falling grapes of your vineyard. You shall leave them for the poor and the alien. I am the Lord your God. You shall not steal, you shall not deal falsely, and you shall not lie to one another. And you shall not swear falsely by my name, profaning the name of your God. I am the Lord. You shall not defraud your neighbor, you shall not steal, and you shall not keep for yourself the wages of a laborer until morning. You shall not revile the deaf, or put a stumbling block before the blind. You shall fear your God, I am the Lord. You shall not render an unjust judgment. You shall not be partial to the poor, or defer to the great. With justice you shall judge your neighbor. You shall not go around as a slanderer among your people. And you shall, not, you shall not profit by the blood of your neighbor. I am the Lord. You shall not hate in your heart anyone of your kin. You shall reprove your neighbor, or you will incur guilt yourself. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against any of your people, but you shall love the, your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Here ends, here endeth the Old Testament lesson. Continue with the Song of Mary, the Magnificat, on page 21. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior, for he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name, and his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He has showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath holpen his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed forever, forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be world without end. Amen. So our second reading is from first, the first epistle to the Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 12 through 28. Thessalonians 5, 1 Thessalonians 5, 12 through 28. That is the very tail end of the letter. But we appeal to you, brothers and sisters, to respect those who labor among you and have charge of you in the Lord and admonish you. Esteem them a very highly in love because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves. And we urge you, beloved, to admonish the idlers, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with all of them. See that none of you repays evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to all. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything, hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do this. Beloved, pray for us. Greet all the brothers and sisters with a holy kiss. I solemnly command you by the Lord that this letter be read to all of them. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Here endeth the epistle lesson. We continue with the Nunc Dimittis on page 22. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. 
For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Gospel reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 19 through 24. Matthew 6, 19 through 24. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither must nor, moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For your, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body, so if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness! No one can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to one, to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. Here endeth the gospel lesson. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Some nice readings today. And it's not often that we read from the book of Leviticus. And there's good reason for that, because um, it's a book of laws. And it's a book of laws that are mostly pertinent to uh, Jewish ritual purity and uh, Jewish life. Um, it's not some not a book that we read on Sunday very much, and there's um, many things in the in the book of Levitic Leviticus that I would not uh, un endorse under any circumstances. Um, we must remember that it comes from a, a different time, a different context, and also it's really applicable applicable to the Jewish people. Uh, and even, you know, Jews have different takes on these, the, the laws of the Torah, you know, whether they're Orthodox Jews or Conservative Jews or uh, Reformed Jews or, or what have you. So that's uh, one, one uh, caveat. Uh, and, and a lot of this, a lot of these uh, ritual laws... They're not, they were never intended to be like moral laws, like unchanged for all time, but rather uh, ways that the Jewish people was distinguished from the Gentiles. So that's, uh, you know, another reason that it's perhaps not pertinent to us as much as some other parts of the Bible and why we don't hear it a lot. Um, it's 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 uh, funny and or funny and disturbing that oftentimes when you hear the book of Leviticus cited, it is it is used is being used as a proof text for something. Uh, proof text is um, uh, if you're not familiar with this uh, this uh, expression, proof texting is something uh, we should all avoid at all cost. Uh, it's it's where you you come to the Bible with a preconceived notion, mm -hmm. and you find a verse to support it. Mm -hmm. So you find you use a verse taken out of context to support your claim. Uh, this is not the way the Bible was meant to be used. Uh, first of all, the Bible is not a book, but a collection of books. And is written not by one person. It's not, you know, God didn't sit down and write it. Mm. It's written by human beings, filtered through human human culture, human consciousness, uh, human prejudice as well. The time and place that it was written in. So, if you ever see someone pointing to a particular verse in the Bible and say, well, here's the proof, then... Um, be wary, especially if they're pointing to the book of Leviticus, which is the book of 
uh, mostly ritual laws. And I say this because um, there are uh, a handful of Bible verses that are used to uh, used against uh, gay people, basically. Mm. Um, one of them, or a couple of them, are in Leviticus. Considering all that you know, I have said, uh, that's sufficient to be wary of using anything from Leviticus to uh, discriminate against someone in our current modern society. That's one. The other thing, though, is how you hear one little verse, something like, uh, man shall not lie with man, or something like that. Uh, one little verse taken out of the book of Leviticus as, as if it's an eternal law for all time. But then you look at the rest of the book, the, the book and everyone completely ignores it. I mean, things about, you know, what food you can eat, you know, don't eat pork, don't eat shellfish, uh, don't, apparently don't eat food if it's older than three days. I mean, uh, our, our, our refrigerator is, is full of abomination in that case, you know. I mean, um, there's, you can read through the book of Leviticus, it's heavy stuff, and there are lots of rules um, that, that, uh, uh, m most people, in, in, except, you know, ultra-Orthodox Jews, most people completely ignore these, these things. Um, also, what people will ignore as they use Leviticus to proof text, or any verse of the Bible, they'll say, oh, well, here, here you go, I, I found this verse, you know, uh, uh, homosexuality is an abomination. Or whatever, whatever it is they're they're trying to prove, or you know, uh, divorce is is not permitted, or whatever. In fact, you can actually find better proof in the Gospels that divorce is not permitted, rather than that, uh, uh, you know, uh, gay people are an abomination. But what also is ignored while citing you know random verses, is the theme that you find throughout the Old Testament, not just the New Testament, where we know that Jesus talks about love and helping the poor and all that, but even in the Old Testament, this is a constant theme. Justice. It's repeated over and over and over again. Justice for the poor. Economic justice. Social justice. But you don't hear the same people, you know, talking about how the Bible talks about justice. And in this, this one passage that we wrote, that we read, you know, yes, it's talking about, um, you know, how long you should leave food or whatever. Um, hold on. Oh, yeah. It's, it's talking about how, you know, you should, uh, how long you should uh, leave food, and if it's over three days, you should burn it. Uh, but what, hap what, what do we have later on? When you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not reap to the very edge of your field or gather the gleanings of your harvest. You shall not strip your vineyard bare or gather the fallen grapes. You shall leave them for the poor and the alien. Poor and alien, foreigners. So this is both about justice for the poor and hospitality to the other. Hospitality to um, people who are not like us. What else do we have? Uh, do not steal. And stealing is also, uh, do not keep for yourself the wages of a laborer until morning. Do not mistreat uh, employees. Do not, uh, you know, uh, exploit workers. Do not profit by the blood of your neighbor. So this is a theme throughout the Bible and the Old Testament. We don't think, 
we don't think of it because we've kind of been trained to think that New Testament is God is love, uh, love your neighbor, help the poor, uh, all that good stuff, warm and fuzzy. And the Old Testament is, you know, wrath of God and uh, sin and judgment and, you know, uh, rules and regulations. Yes, there is all that. But the undergirding theme of the, the Jewish tradition is justice. And the prophets come back to this again and again. That's what, when the prophets are, you know, uh, speaking out against those in power. They're not speaking out against those in power because they're, you know, uh, you know um, because of some personal morality problem. They are speaking out against those in power because they, they exploit the poor and they mistreat the poor. That's, that's an overriding theme. And Jesus was not, work, was not preaching against the Old Testament. He was coming out of that tradition. You know, I do not come to, uh, to abolish the law, but to fil fulfill it. And the law is pretty much all what we call the Old Testament. Um, Jesus was coming out of that tradition, not, uh, not overturning it. Yes, he, he, he called us to, to move beyond the, the literal and the, you know, the, the legalism of following you know, uh, these laws to, 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 uh, in an exact way, rather than seeing the big picture. What Jesus is calling us to do is to, is to live according to the spirit of the Torah rather than the letter, the spirit, which is basically, and it was, and it was cited right here at the end of our passage, that you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus didn't come up with that. He was, that was something he was uh, uh, bringing back, well not bringing back, but emphasizing from, um, from the, the, the Jewish tradition from which he came. Um, and so that kind of one of the things that is, that, that's underlying this, uh, this idea that, well, Old Testament is all, you know, rules and regulations and, and uh, wrath of God and whatnot. There's a bit of anti-Semitism under, under that, undergirding that. When in fact, Jesus himself was coming out of that tradition. It's just that he brought our focus back to the essential rather than the periphery, you know, how long, you know, how, you know, uh, you know how long you could keep food around with, before it becomes an abomination, you know. Uh, he wanted to focus us back on the essential, which is love your neighbor as yourself. Not just in a, a personal way, which is kind of what uh, in, in, in the Western world is kind of, religion has kind of been, kind of been uh, corralled into a, just the personal realm, you know. It's been pushed out of public life, uh, you know. And that suits those in power just fine when you know, love your neighbor as yourself is just, uh, you know, me personally helping someone in need, which is good and which we should do. But it's more than that, because in the prophetic tradition, and Jesus came out of that prophetic tradition, it's not just us on an individual level, love your neighbor as yourself, but as a society, as groups, as nations, as church, and that's that's something we we have gotten we have dis gotten distance from. 
like when you hear people say, you know, we should take care of, of our own and we don't need to take refugees uh, because that's not our problem. Or, you know, the poor are not my problem. They should get a job and work hard uh, and I'll enjoy my wealth. Well, it said even in the book of Levit Leviticus, which is thought to be so, you know, uh, harsh and judgmental. It's saying you need to leave the, ex the excess for the poor and for those who are uh, alien, refugees. So this is... Um, You know, when you're when you're reading these these Old Testament texts, uh, we need to focus not on you know this verse, that verse. Well, I don't like what that says, and there are lots of things in the Old Testament that I find to be abhorrent, uh, and some in the New as well. But it's the the Bible is a a complete work. The message is not you know verses; it is the whole message and the whole underlying message basically comes down to love. That's brought in a very clear focus in the New Testament. But it always was there. Because justice and, and hospitality for, uh, for the other, those who are not like us, that is an expression of love. Amen. Amen. And now we will have a hymn. Uh, now the green blade rises, which is two, 237 in common praise.
continue with the Creed, the Apostles' Creed, on page 22. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. And let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen. And mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And do thy ministers with righteousness. And make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people. And bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. And evermore mightily defend us. O God, may clean our hearts within us. And take note of thy Holy Spirit from us. collect for today, the fifth Sunday after Easter. O Lord, from whom all good things do come, grant to us thy humble servants that by thy holy inspiration we think those things that be good, and by thy merciful guiding may perform the same through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give that our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee, we being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And usually the... Uh, the prayers for the Queen are in morning prayer, but it is uh, the Queen's Platinum Jubilee this this week, so I will, uh, I mean, this, celebrate it this week. Also, I'll pray the prayer on page 12. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, high and mighty King of Kings, Lord of Lords, the only ruler of princes, who dost from thy throne behold all the dwellers upon earth. Most heartily we beseech thee with thy favor to behold our most gracious sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth, and so replenish her with the grace of thy Holy Spirit, that she may always incline to thy will and walk in thy way. Endue her plenteously with heavenly gifts, grant her in health and wealth long to live, strengthen her that she may vanquish and overcome all her enemies, and finally, after this life, she may obtain everlasting joy and felicity through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now is our time for intercessory prayer. If you have prayer requests, please uh, write them in the comment section as we play, pray together. God of peace, God of healing and wholeness, We lift up to you all of the suffering human family. We continue to pray for the, the people of Ukraine, especially those in the East. We pray for peace, for protection for the vulnerable, for support for refugees and internally displaced people. Pray for those who are, who are fighting to defend their country, their homes. We 
pray for all other victims, including non-human victims, for animals and, and the environment. And we pray for the people of Russia. We pray that that light may penetrate through the darkness, that truth, the truth may overcome misinformation and propaganda, and that the hearts of every Russian citizen of Russia may be turned with peace and brotherly love to their neighbor. And we pray for the leadership of Russia especially for President Putin, that the great crowd, cloud of darkness and cruelty and inhumanity that has grasped a hold of him may be dispelled by your light, life, and love. And may he know profound, deep, and radical conversion. God of love and mercy. Yeah. We are praying for Si Hong Duong, whose body is given out, and for her daughter Annie and her family, who are taking care of her. Gracious God, we pray for all those who are in need, those in our parish, in our families, our loved ones, our communities. We pray for all those who are sick, those who are ailing in mind, body, or spirit. We especially pray for those who, who suffer from mental health challenges. These sicknesses that we often overlook because they're not as visible as ailments of the body. We pray for all who are sick in our parish, those in need of healing, pray for Donna, pray for Irene, for Sandy, and we pray especially for Kat. Gracious God, we, we also pray for those who have died especially those who have died this day anywhere in the world, especially those who have died alone or with no one, to pray for them. May light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. Lord, we pray for all those who are preparing for baptism those to be baptized at Pentecost. And we pray for all baptized Christians that in this time of Easter we may remember our baptismal vows and the ongoing work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. God of love and mercy. Yeah. We pray for our leaders leaders in government, leaders in industry and, and economy and leaders in religion, those who have wealth and power, those who have influence, we pray that they all may use their power for the good, the good of their fellow human beings, and the good of your good earth, God of love and mercy. Yeah. We pray for protection of our environment and for inspiration in our hearts as human beings, as stewards of cre your creation, to do what is needed and requisite to, to reverse or slow climate change and to take care 
of the natural world that you have entrusted to us. God of love and mercy. Amen. I pray for, pray for our diocese, especially as we prepare for diocese and synod in a few weeks. We pray for all parishes of our diocese, especially for Christ Church Beau Repair. We pray for direction and wisdom, and we pray for revival as we fallen into bad habits because of COVID, fallen away from the church, fallen into uh, a stupor of sorts that we may be revived to come and be the body of Christ and pro boldly proclaim the gospel to the world. God of love and mercy. Amen. Gracious God, all these prayers we have spoken aloud or whispered silently, our hearts are written. All this, we, we lift them up to you and all this we pray in Christ's holy name. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their request. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us for evening prayer this evening. As usual, our service continues uh, every week at 7 on Facebook Live and the website. And as always, Sunday worship, 10 o'clock at the church and online. Uh, I will, because... Uh, some things have changed regarding the re regulations, COVID regulations, and uh, different, different information is circulating around. Uh, the government has said that we can uh, drop the mask mandate, and our diocese has said the same thing. But uh, the leadership of our parish, uh, and I agree with this, um, has decided that for the time being, we're going to keep uh, the mask uh, requirement in church because... I think we're, we shouldn't move too quickly, and we're not entirely out of the woods. And there are people who are hesitant to return and may be working toward returning to church in person. But lifting the mask mandate, I think, might uh, make some people hesitant. So uh, we're trying to get uh, get as many people back to church as possible, so I don't want any impediment to that. Uh, also, uh, we are allowed to start the, to reintroduce the common cup, but we also decided that it's too soon for that, so communion will continue in one kind only for, uh, for now. Uh, but so I just encourage you, uh, if you've been hesitant, um, as things get better, and if you if you do feel comfortable to come back in person, yes, we'll continue to broadcast online for those who need it, and also to broadcast our our services to the world to bring more people in. But uh, uh, being the body of Christ does have a a, a a bodily and physical aspect to it, and there's and. Uh, so let's try to get back in the habit of coming to church in person, little by little. So I hope to see uh, many of you. Oh, and also uh, on June 12th, we're looking to have a church picnic after the uh, Sunday morning service. So uh, stay tuned for that. I wish you a uh, pleasant rest of the evening and a blessed rest of the week and a good night.